Look at this, dude. Holy shit, this is crazy. There's, there's a star. Oh, yeah. to another overnight photography adventure, this time for the total solar eclipse. I am en route up to Vermont by a friend of mine that I'm going to meet up there, Steve. Enjoy the weekend camping, first of the season here, and then Monday afternoon we are going to enjoy the total solar eclipse and the path of totality. This is a story of significance, written with certainties uncertainties, and shared experiences, witnessing an incredible dance of celestial bodies. People from all walks of life, each with their own stories, converging under the same sky, all differences forgotten. Some of us, though, seek a quieter, more solitary encounter. And this is my story. I just stopped for gas and a quick bite. I've got about an hour in front of me and we're getting a snowy, rainy mix. I was gonna call it a wintry mix, but technically it's springtime. So they just had a nor'easter up here uh, the last couple of days and it's still sort of, it's a little, the weather's a little inclement, but I'm not too, too bad. Pretty sure that the trending is downward from here in. <laughs> oh my god, I'm watching Adam's latest video, Photography's Biggest Headaches. <laughs> hilarious. I'm gonna have to put a link in the description to Adam's video. He is so magnetic, my god. Good stuff, Adam, good stuff. I gotta hit the road, put this in my fridge and get going. In a quarter mile, turn right onto US 2 West. So this is Jeffersonville, Vermont, and here's what it looks like in a path of totality. We stayed at Brewster River Campground. Quite lovely, I might add. So we are trying to debate how far in we want to get. It gets pretty deep down here. But supposedly this is the best campsite on the, on the lot, number 14. Bro, this is absolutely beautiful. Uh, but no matter of getting in here, it's going to be a little challenging. This is perhaps the most fun I've had setting up camp. What a blast. camp now set up, there was one more obvious thing to do. Steve is a seasoned camper. And when he saw my pop-up fire pit, he was hooked. He even ordered one while we were at camp. Stick around for the bloopers and meet Steve in full action, living the Hoodston lifestyle. Steve in the kitchen. <laughs> Yeah, this is, uh, this is pizza time. You're good with the pepper? Oh yeah. I like to call this Steve's Veggie Bomb Camp Pizza. And honestly, everything tastes better at camp. It smells so good. It's a rather simple recipe. Dice and grill your veggies, 
and then along with your toppings and sauce on a flatbread. All right, with camp set up, Steve just put together some pizzas here. We're gonna enjoy some, some dinner at the campfire and just enjoy the evening. Life is good. Pop them on the Blackstone, grab a beer while you're waiting, mm. and Man, camp style, veggie bomb pizza. <laughs> So that was our first day at camp. It was cold, but we barely felt it. Speaking of cold, what better way to cap off the evening alongside a river and a campfire? Well, good morning, everyone. It is a cold one, 28 degrees this morning, and it's time to go out and make some coffee and start this day. Staying warm is gonna be, that's gonna be the fun thing today. So with that, let's get outside. Let's get this morning started, and uh, yeah, let's go. There's something magical about making coffee at camp. I don't know, but it always tastes better paired with the outdoors. I recently worked with a local roaster a few towns over from mine, and now I have my own special roast and coffee line. And I have to say, it is good. It was pretty cold this morning, but as we enjoyed hot coffee, we began to notice the soft backbite illuminating the river. It was quickly warming up, and the light was calling us. All but a few steps to the river. This wasn't a hard decision. Breakfast can wait a few minutes. It's time to make a photograph. So let me walk you through this composition and what I was thinking. This outcropping of trees at this angle makes for a nice foreground subject. By shooting into a hill across the way, I'm able to avoid the sky in my frame causing distractions. Instead, I'll emphasize attention on the lovely canopy-like pines. I also wanted to include snow in the foreground, which complements the snow on the far side and over the river. But what really brings this image together is the river. By using a circular polarizer, I can cut through the glare to include these beautiful cobblestones in the story. And by dragging the shutter, I can add movement to the water running over the rocks for a dreamy effect. So if you're planning a trip to Brewster River Campground, this is simply a quick tour from our site, number 14, to the bathroom. There are two toilets on the left here, and a nice vanity for shaving, brushing, etc. And there are two shower stalls on the right here. I was happy to discover hot water as well. Overall, you just can't beat it. Heading back to campsite, and this is a Sunday afternoon. Tomorrow will be the eclipse. I'm gonna do a little scouting today. Uh, I have not spent a lot of time for this trip scouting areas. Really, this whole trip was uh, sort of the art of spontaneity. Good day to be up here. It's beautiful, beautiful place, and uh, let's see what the day uh, brings us. Fire up the torch. <laughs> now, while Steve loved the pop-up fire pit, he was quite intrigued with my Snow Peak blowtorch, especially after hearing it. I can't begin to say how much joy this torch brings me. Fine Japanese engineering and such a blast to use. Okay, so Steve, we are 
practicing for tomorrow's solar eclipse. What do you got, man? So, assuming that that tree is the thickness of my thumb, which would be equivalent to the thick width of the sun at arm's length, I kind of need a square on the tree. So that would kind of represent the top, the bottom, and the sides of the sun. So Steve's got 200 millimeters. We're gonna see what this looks like with our little reference here. And there we go. And Steve's working that angle. I'm working this angle here. I am shooting up to the sun. Now I have a 10 ND, an ND6, an ND3, and a CPL on here. And I keep my lens cap on as I as I do my tests, pop that back on as I watch where the where the sun will be as I time it. So if I take the lens off, not causing damage. Now look at where the sun is right here. I'll reference that. Put my cap back on, check the time. This is shooting at 200 millimeters right now. Let's see what time it is. I'll come back and check this. Quick shoddy test, if you will. Let's make most of our frame black. And let's just, let's just reveal a little bit white and see if it auto exposes for that difference. Okay, it's starting to expose for it. Yeah, I think it's gonna work. I'm gonna say that'd be like a corona. I think these settings are going to work. Real feel high tomorrow, we'll feel like it's 62. Okay. Yes, we're noticing everybody is going the other way. We, of course, are going against the grain. We have a slightly different plan of attack. Yep. Our story and I'm sticking to it. All right, me and Steve are scouting for a good location for tomorrow. We are at a location undisclosed <laughs> that we think may have a little potential here. That thing is mangled, man. That's just look at this. Poor little guy. She's the police. Both of us were feeling a vibe here. It was far enough from the road, and there were no signs or tracks indicating anyone had been here. Well, except for the coyotes, of course, as that poor little lamb had shown. There were two of them. One was off to the right. All right, so it is exactly 3.26 p.m. right now. Tomorrow at exactly 24 hours from now, we will be in darkness. There's our sun. I'm seeing here, if we're here, yeah. shooting this way, I could see the, the shadows. I mean, that's dancing all over here. Here's me right here. This looks this looks pretty contrasty in the video yeah, I'm exactly. looking at. I was just noticing as you were standing there, I'm thinking. What else can you ask for? It's gonna be dark anyway, no one's gonna see us. Yeah, right? <laughs> And this very well may be our spot. Yeah. Heading back to camp, we were on the lookout for a plan B. But we were pretty excited for plan A and hoping nobody had the same idea. Yeah, baby. Cooking tonight. Some dinner going, nice broccoli over here. Got some homeless dogs kicking over here. Life is good. And cheers to our viewers. <laughs> ah, yes, the satisfaction of torching it up. Did I mention I love my torch? I do. And so here we are. We have our location scouted, our camera settings, and a plan for shooting the event without distracting us from the experience. So, a little more ice cream tonight, some fellowship, and hopefully a good night's sleep for a big day tomorrow. We are 
we're ready to go. We have a plan together. We have our location. Just enjoying breakfast here. Going through this cool app, giving us all these details we need. We'll be using this app here during the event. It barks out at us all the preparation and times to get ready for like diamond ring, baby seconds. beat, the uh, shadow bands, all that stuff. So, shoot or not shoot? My concern is if I set up the camera and I put my finger on that trigger, part of my brain at that point in focus is on that trigger. I'm having to share them, divide my attention ever so slightly between what's going on in the sky with a once in a lifetime moment and trying to get the shot. So I'm asking so <laughs> philosophically, Steve, why is it so important for you to photograph a shot? Because I don't know, I've never shot a once in a lifetime event and I don't know if just what happened at the shutter button is not going to consume any of my attention whatsoever. In today's day and age, we're always about capturing the moment as opposed to living in the moment. Part of me says, Steve, really what this eclipse is all about for you is to completely slow down and for once in your life, <laughs> like with intention, be in the moment. Do we make these decisions now <laughs> or do we keep ourselves flexible for the moment? I'm all about flexibility. <laughs> First contact, what's it been, 10 minutes now? We love that, yeah. And we can see the moon coming in from the lower right-hand side about five o'clock. And it looked pretty cool, like somebody took a bite out of the sun. The shadows are so soft now. So compared to like 10 minutes ago or so, I'm definitely feeling cooler. The breeze feels like it's picking up. It seems like there is this color cast over the field that wasn't there before. Just under 20 minutes. Okay, look at this guy right here. Yeah. All right, so we're getting close now. I'm not sure if this is going to pick this up, but there is a ominous feeling, right? Like this, everything is just dimmed. It just feels... How'd you say, like an apocalyptic movie, like a zombie apocalypse or something, or where the, all the tones are muted? It has a very muted feel to it right now. Or you know, like when you oversaturate something on your camera, the colors, or you desaturate it? Right, right, yeah. I feel like all the colors around us have been just desaturated. Desaturated, that's a good way to put it. It does. Everything feels, it's weird. We are under eight minutes. <laughs> For the total solar eclipse it is so so moody here it's just really really weird eerie feeling okay so i'm set up for nine bracket shots so i don't have to pay attention i'm a manual focus two second timer Whoop, hit that let him rifle away as i get to enjoy the show steve's taking a similar approach he's doing some video and he's just gonna let it rip as he enjoys the show you guys watching this get to enjoy it as well. Look at this dude. Holy shite, this is crazy. 
There's, there's a star. Oh yeah. Look at this! Oh my god, it's like a spotlight! <laughs> wow! Okay, that's it. Man! Oh my god. Look at how the sky's lighting right up again. <laughs> look at how bright it's getting, how fast! Oh, Holy damn. shit! Damn! Oh Whoa, and look, you can see the ring again. Oh yeah. It's incredible. Eclipse totality is magical. It's simply an exquisite experience. So watch, watch with your eyes, your brain, your heart, your whole being. It's like seeing a window into another dimension, the blackness of the moon encircling by the corona's beautiful gossamer plumes or wings of opalescent light. experiences. Some of us seek a quieter, more solitary encounter. And this is our story. This weekend has been awe-inspiring. And while the eclipse was the highlight, I'd like to share with you my favorite image from the trip. It speaks of adventure beyond the river, upstream, and into the unknown beautiful light that awaits. I hope you enjoyed this labor of love. My wish is that it inspires you to live a more meaningful and adventurous life. Our time is short on this incredibly beautiful planet. So get busy living. Hi there campers and aspiring photographers. Are you looking to take your camping and photography to the next level? Well then, you need to be living the Hoodsta lifestyle. Introducing to you the latest product from the Hoodsta, it's the Hoodsta Fire Pit. And if you act now and order this within the next 10 minutes, we're also gonna send to you free the Hoodsta 
buy a polka. And if you're over 18 years old, then you also get this nice entry level Hoodsta Fiestata. If you're not living the Hoodsta lifestyle, you need to ask yourself, why not? Act now.